Hello everyone and welcome to another video and today we're going to be talking about breaking so actually breaking better so how to break better and here I'm going to be talking about the concepts of breaking so not just about okay break here break there and you're going to be faster but just really understanding the concepts and here I'm using the Fanatec V3 pedals and these are my pedals of choice and I've been using them for at least two years now so a pretty good piece of equipment and I think it's gonna last for a little bit longer than two more years so yeah pretty uh, worth you know worth every penny so you can find them in the link down in the description so most of this video is going to be about understanding the concepts of breaking so the breaking it might seem like okay this is easy but the first thing that you have to do is get to know your brakes so this is kind of the most basic things to do but I think a lot of people just go by it and they think, okay, gonna be faster on just whatever I do, I just gotta replicate your way of driving. So whenever I'm going in the lobby or whenever I'm try, trying to get on the rig, I first practice 25 to about 50%, getting up to 75 and then to 100. So at each point, I should always know where my foot is and the next point is that you have to find the breaking points after you kind of know where and how your foot handles the brakes so you can pretty much use whatever you like you can use a lot of references but i like to use static points something that doesn't really move so like curbs gap signs or you can actually see in this point the 100 meter sign i'm using the ending of the curb here i'm using the fence on the right and you should always try to replicate the moves that you do so for example if you always want to break there you should always break there so in situations like when you're in a certain race if you're in the slipstream it could be a little bit different but the point of all of this is like get to know your brakes and then after get to know your breaking points but the other thing is that i'm kind of worried at most is like breaking too late which usually happens to me when i'm on my warm-up lap i never practice this and i'm not very consistent with breaking so i didn't break hard enough at this point and i wasn't consistent enough so i was going on and off the brakes and in the end i missed the apex and you can actually see that i lost like a tenth tenth and a half on the way out of this corner so it might not seem like a lot but okay the race had like 19 laps okay yeah, 19 laps and if i did that mistake 19 times i'll be losing almost two seconds after the race so if you combine it with this one it wouldn't be more than like a two seconds it would be like four seconds so get to know your limitations so here i was in the slipstream and usually here i break at the 50 but this point at i mean i just braked a little bit before because i would say I was carrying an extra 10 or 15 kilometers per hour more so that meant i should and i needed to break a little bit before so i broke in between the 50 and the 100 meter sign so this is very important if you want to follow someone in front of you so this was a very very high high-end lobby high competitive drivers all over the i mean all over europe the best there is in europe so you have to be patient of whatever you do so don't try to rush things and as i said before if you lose one ten each time and then you combine it with 20 laps you're gonna lose 20 you know you're gonna lose 20 times the amount or two seconds so i in the end after 17 laps of being patient i finally got the move done and in the end all of this got me into p3 uh, right after Killian and Jose so just being patient in that one using the time that you have and you know letting the car do the work and just getting to know your you know your style of driving and getting to know your limitations it's more than important but breaking too hard is also a huge huge problem so for example you just have a look at this chart so this charge a chart indicates like you only can break like that in the straight line so heavy braking should only be done in the straight line and as you start to turn the wheel like from point b to point c you should minimize your braking and kind of work your weight with the steering wheel so you i would say to about 50 percent of the brakes should kind of match 50 percent with the steering wheel so that would kind of be the the good point uh, to you know to focus on but you can actually see what difference does it make when you're doing your gradual braking or 
maybe not too much of that break in versus the non-gradual like heavy break or you know literally 100% of the breaks and no break at all so you can see like on the left hand side I've got everything moving nice and easy fast flowing section i have speed so then i have downforce and in the end i have a lot of grip because the car is just not you know it's kind of in between all of that stuff i made a couple of mistakes but the car was really flowing around the circuit it was actually quite nice and it felt you know it felt right but if you're hitting the brakes very very hard then turn the, the wheel very very rapid i mean you're gonna be you're just gonna be out of balance all the time and your times will drop significantly so you can see the difference here is three seconds so three seconds means if you're winning or losing the race or you can use it and i mean you can actually see it in this very simple but very i would say very very accurate example so here on the left i'm braking very hard at one point but on the right i'm using trail braking braking very very efficiently but I'm breaking to about 50% for a longer time. So the time difference was, wasn't was really that much, but a tenth and a half over the course of, I would say 15, 20 laps, it could really mean like a significant difference. And also in this one, in this example, I'm showing you the gradual way versus the non-gradual way of applying the brakes. So in group in group two i mean especially in like group cars not n class cars it really means a lot so this group two means if you don't have the speed you don't have the downforce if you don't have the downforce you have no grip which in the end means more wheel spin and more wheel spin of course means worse lap times and you know in the end it just makes your life a lot easier and your overall laps will be much much slower so for example here you can see like i'm struggling so much on the way out because the car i stopped it too much it lost maybe it lost maybe like five to ten kilometers per hour more but then it just doesn't have the downforce and it's almost impossible to turn in the same way as i'm doing it on the left hand side so if you're trying to replicate my time if you're trying to replicate any other driver you, that you see out there you got to understand these principles because every driver does it in his own way so if you try to do if you try to do it in your own way it's just not going to be the same so you're going to miss one little thing and all of a sudden you know you're going to be losing like half a second to about a second and you're just going to be wondering where so this is actually where you're probably applying too much of the braking or you're just not letting go of the brakes as soon as you could so it's also a thing that you should be focusing i'm going to be mo making more of these videos but you can actually see my top 10 lap here so not applying too much trail braking at that point minimized my sliding in that corner and then upshifting the higher gear to prevent the wheel spin plus to get additional traction of of course in third gear you have more traction and you have more speed but if i stayed in second it would kind of initiate the drift so you can actually see i'm braking I'm braking a little bit and then applying the brakes and very steady with the downshifts because if you downshift and press the brakes down hard the car will just understeer and here as we talked about in the previous section i'm kind of matching my brake and turning inputs so i broke in the straight line and then only then when the car is kind of slow down a bit this is where he's tried to turn the wheel more same situation same kind of point only brake hard in the straight line and when the car kind of turns in or it loses a little bit of speed this is where you can turn in with i would say a bit more here i lost a bit of time on the way in the car just slided a bit more than it should have but in the end it got me to the top 10 in the world so this is still a competitive time so a 216.550 was still competitive by the end of the week so i think all of this will make sense to you so be very patient analyze the situation you're in it's not the same if you're running the time trail or if you're in the race it's you know if you're running in the slipstream of someone and of course match your wheel and pedal movement as we discussed you can find it in the graph that i showed in you know in the previous i think it was uh, like two minutes ago but also get to know your brakes so that's the first and most basic point that you can do get to know your brakes and build the foundation on that so it's very easy to like okay say i can break like you i can break like that but 
every time you go onto the track, every time you got to focus on break into about 10, 15, 20%, because that in the end is going to make a huge difference. So guys, if you like this video, please smash that like button. And I really, really do hope that you enjoyed this one. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye.